Hi, this is Stacy the from the advisor and today I just I have a very special guest and it's Nick Dillon. Before we begin though, I want to just do a shout out to our sponsor and it's DMA Mark Consulting and basically DMA Consulting, you know, they really push for the small business owners. They don't want you to get scammed by these big companies. They want you to grow and their focus is on helping small businesses grow and not be scammed by big marketing groups that take your money and you don't get what you could really get and go as far as you need to go. So DMM Mar DMA Marketing is located at dmaworld.com and Mark is the founder and the owner and you could reach him at mark at dmaworld.com and his phone number is 321-235-5700 and he encourages you to give him a call or an email because he really wants to help you because he wants the business owners to succeed and move the extra length without having to pay a ton of money. So visit Mark and his company and talk to him and see where you could actually tweak little parts of your business and grow and become that business owner that you wanted to become and profit and scale the way you always wanted to. So now I'd like to talk to our special guest and it's Nick Dillon. Nick Dillon is an awesome individual and he has a lot to share with us. And he focuses on belief, how your beliefs can change and your mindset can actually drive your emotions and also help you with self-discovery and then have you uh, really focus on the power of choice. Because a lot of times we get set in our ways and we don't think that we can actually make these changes because we're so used to in the environment we live in, the habits we've created, and we don't really think that it, we're capable of changing those habits or we don't even realize it because we're so set in our ways. So Nick Dillon is here today. He has such great information. I'm so excited to have him on the show. He is a whirlwind information. He's going to show you how you could change your life life with simple t tools and techniques. So Nick, why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself, what you do, and share with the world these great tools and techniques and things that you've encountered and created over the years. Thank you so much, Stacy, for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. Yes, my name is Nick Dillon, known to many audiences as the Belief Coach. I am the accountability expert and what I call the mindset shifter. And I have been doing this work around belief and mindset and awareness for 20 plus years <clears throat> as a coach, as an author, as a speaker, as a therapist. And I love this work. And it is my belief that when we understand the core essence of our beliefs that dictate our mindset and how we show up with our energy on a daily basis, and we get a hold of that, then we really can truly be the highest expression of ourselves that we can be. But what I often know is that a lot of us don't understand where these beliefs come from. And so what we don't realize is that as we're youngsters and we're growing up and we're impressionable and we have all of these experiences from our teachers, from our parents, from our peers and colleagues, and all the experiences from our clergy, from everything that we, and one that we are exposed to, little by little, our beliefs are forming. And by the age seven, a lot of our fundamental beliefs are actually formed at that time. And then as the years grow and we enter our teenage years, we ultimately are discovering and trying to find ourselves in this world that we live in. And a lot of times our experiences based on the beliefs that we form unconsciously are reinforced by those ongoing experiences. And then we enter to what is called adult world. And we say to ourselves, wow, who am I? Who, who, what are my beliefs? What are my, what drives me? What motivates me? And some of us operate in a behavior that we understand ourselves. Some operate in a behavior that we just are on autopilot. I like to be very intentional here to say that, guess what? We have some beliefs that we have bought along for the ride that are working great for us. They reinforce who we are. 
We understand them. They allow us to be productive, to be effective. They allow us to reach our goals. We are very clear on who we are, but we also have those beliefs that are self-defeating, that are disabling, that are limiting, that are not working good for us. But we bring those along for the ride because those years prior, some of those beliefs settled in and became our normal. And so we adopted those beliefs about ourselves and our view of the world. So the reality is, is that we spend each and every day really battling the self-defeating beliefs. The ones that are solid and working for us, they continue to do that. But in a lot of cases, there's a lot of times when we self-select out or we don't seek out an opportunity or we don't seek a promotion. We decide not to enter that relationship. We sometimes sit in isolation or find ourselves in isolation all in the name of self-acceptance, self-belief, self-reliance. And when we don't have a positive belief about ourselves first, it can impact every aspect of our lives. And so I'm in the business of allowing us to get our beliefs in alignment with our passion and our purpose. Because if there's out of alignment, then we find ourselves stuck. We find ourselves unfulfilled. We find ourselves operating in lack. And believe it or not, you got to turn the spotlight on you and the spotlight on this mental mindset. Right. You know, so many people get stuck in their ways and they just, you know, they're so determined to live life the way they lived it their whole entire life. And it's so hard for so many people to break their old habits, to re reset the mind. And, you know, I, I say, you know, retrain your mindset and, you know, because, you know, I think, to, you know, people have to realize if things aren't working and, you know, it hasn't been working a good for you in a, for a while then we have to kind of look back and we have to see what's not working why it's not working and maybe make a few tweaks doesn't mean we have to change our entire life because so many people are fearful of change but a couple little tweaks here and there can make a big difference don't you think absolutely you're you, you you're spot on in that part of this journey called life means that we have to challenge and disrupt the beliefs that aren't working for us. And yes, to your point, we're overwhelmed sometimes to be able to do that. We're fearful of what change looks like. But too often, I think we get comfortable in the space of and of discomfort yeah. um, because that's been our normal for so long. And mm -hmm. the unfamiliar, even if it can bring new possibilities and options, we shy away from. Yeah. We're in a world where everyone doesn't like to feel uncomfortable. It's natural. Right. But I have learned not only in this work, but in the power of success. At some point along the journey, I've learned and had my best, most favorite life lessons through overcoming fear, through yeah. going through discomfort, through, right. and because that's where I find my resiliency. That's mm -hmm. where I find what I'm truly capable of. That's right. where I found my mindset has stretched beyond what I obviously thought I believed initially. Right. And it's just, we got to be willing to move a little bit outside our comfort zone to test mm -hmm. the waters just a little further, because we should always be in this growth mindset. We should yeah. always have this mindset of willing and wanting to move forward. That is why it is so important to have ourselves surrounded by people that support the mission, vision, value of us. Because yes. they challenge us, they keep us on our toes, and they can be an accountability partner for us in mm -hmm. achieving those things that we want. The reason you hear that 85 to 90% of New Year's resolutions are over within the first 90 days <laughs> is because they never believed they would accomplish them in the first place. Right. So this is really a mindset game yes. until we're up out of here. And I feel like you really have to want it because, you know, 
I found my my most uh, deepest successes came with it was it was an uphill battle. You know, it came with tears. It came with pain. It came with a lot of things. It wasn't easy. But once I got over the hump, it was life changing. It was just an amazing feeling. But it wasn't an easy journey. And I feel like people today, you know, they they want everything quick. They want things easy and they don't realize that sometimes getting up the hill, getting over that is, is a battle, but you know, at the end, there's a rainbow, you know, and you know, everything comes with challenges, pain, tears, and, and all the other good stuff, but there's a rainbow, don't you think at the Absolutely. end? Absolutely. You appreciate it more. We appreciate it when we have went through a journey, a transformational journey. I believe those accomplishments, even though there's some ups and downs, and I, and I say, I used to term, it gets lean and mean, <laughs> you know, even during those times when I've come out of that, right. oh my God, how much I have learned, not only about the process, but if you're really in reflection, you learn a lot about you. Yes. I think this transformational journey allows us to see who we are. Yes, to your point. We're in this technology age and we want things at our fingertips. We don't want to be uncomfortable. We don't want to have to wait on something. We don't want to go through the process. We want to be successful today. I want to be a millionaire today. I want to right. be, I want to have be debt free today. I want to have a successful business today. I want to have an amazing relationship right now, but there's work that goes through that. And yes. it's a process and a transformational process to get all of those successes that we want. Because the reality is, is that if we got everything we wanted right now in the blink of an eye, if we're not shifting our mindset before or in the journey to it, then you could have it. It could be right in front of you and you have no idea what to do with it, how to keep it, how to sustain it. That growth in the transformational process allows for really understanding, really appreciating the journey, appreciating where we are, appreciating yeah. how far we've come. This is about inaction. And mm -hmm. if, if, we're, if we're not willing to be in action, then we stay the status quo. But yes. if I'm willing to believe forward is what I call it, that means I'm pressing, I'm thinking far, I'm setting some goals, even though they might be some stretch goals and they might even be uncomfortable, but I'm right. willing to push myself. You mentioned yeah. something earlier about um, sometimes it hurts to be able to, to go through something because you want something so bad. That's a mm -hmm. great question that we can ask ourselves. How bad do we want it? Right. That's a number one coaching question that I ask clients a lot. You want this, how bad? And I'm just really testing how much transformation in you are you willing to do to get there? Because yeah. it's always going to be a process and we've got to be willing to put in that work. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Now, people who are stuck in their beliefs, you know, they might want it, but then they're, they're not willing to change their, their beliefs. You know, what are some ways, you know, people could actually start the transition and actually start changing their beliefs because people just get stuck in their same ways and you say to them well I think you need to do x y and z I think you should consider that oh no 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 it's not going to work you know and they give all these reasons why but they're not giving it a chance so what are some tips you can give to people on the process of starting to change their belief system yes great great question Stacy one of the first things that I would say is Take some time and really, really get comfortable with your own emotional self. Mm -hmm. So that is, in essence, you understanding you for who you are. That also means you accepting you where you are, okay? And I'm always very, very intentional about reminding us that who you compare yourself to in life should really be who you were yesterday. And if I have a, 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 a ambition or a goal of getting better and disrupting some limiting beliefs and this stuckness that might be holding me back, 
I have to do the pencil and paper exercise, which is write the belief down mm -hmm. and write the book. And by writing the belief down, I want you to also write, if I stay in this belief, if I maintain this belief, even though it may not be working for me, what do I put at risk? Right. And this pencil and paper exercise, if I write down, if I keep this belief, what do I put at risk? Write everything that comes to mind. Right. And then on the flip side of that, write down by maintaining this belief, what reward do I get? Mm -hmm. Because we don't hold on to a belief, even if the reward is that I'm safe. It, mm -hmm. it doesn't challenge me to do anything different. Um, I stay the status quo. I don't feel the level of uncomfortability that moving away from the belief would allow. Yeah. And then from there, ask yourself, what would it cost me to disrupt the belief? Mm -hmm. What do I have to give up? If I change this belief about me, if I right. change this belief about moving forward, and sometimes the reward and what I would be having to give up really is what keeps us stuck and holds us back. That right. involves the work. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, I say, if I change the belief, what in fact do I gain? And right. what I gain is some of those rewards that we want, but we can't see them right now because I'm not willing to give up. And the rewards that are there, good, bad, or indifferent, are, are the ones pulling at the belief in its current state. Be, remember, we're going to always be the loudest person talking to us. Yes. Regardless of who is around externally, we're going to be the one that drives us in internally. Right. And that's the exercise I would have each person do. And I go through this as part of my coaching program, as part of my accountability program, because that is what you need to do is see it on paper. Yes. Because I think a lot of times our beliefs are just these unconscious things that we don't really realize, let alone write down. But right. when we break down the reasoning why we can't move forward to something. On our best day of saying it's an external thing, mm -hmm. we don't realize that the biggest culprit is really just me getting out of my own way. <laughs> right, exactly. I, I, that is so true. I think people don't realize that, you know, most of the time they're the biggest culprit and they're the one causing the chaos and they don't realize that they keep looking around and they say, oh, it's because of that. It's because of that. It's because of that. But really it's because of their beliefs, their, their mindset and their emotions, you know, and I wanted to ask you with your emotions, when you see these people with unhealthy beliefs and an unhealthy mindset, what type of emotional, you know, emotions do you really see them going through? Like, what do you see, you know, like a common, common symptoms of, are they, you know, emotional in a certain way? Are they reacting in a certain way? You know, are they temperamental? Are their moods changing? Are they more, you know, anxiety driven? Are they, you know, all these different types of things? What do you see like the, the, on the default end, the common, you know, emotions that you see these people going through? Yes. Great question again, Stacy. From a therapeutic standpoint and a coaching standpoint. So I'll put both hats on here. Okay. <laughs> Usually, and, and this is really tricky for the listening audience because I want them to get this, is that a lot of times when our beliefs are so strong and they're so strongly against what we want to do moving forward, mm -hmm. that tells me it's a belief in and of itself that is trying to protect you in some way. Mm -hmm. We don't realize that as we get older, some of the experiences that we may have had and form the belief about it um, to protect ourselves may not be relevant today. Right. So that strong belief that we might bring in today that holds us back in any capacity, right. make some strong emotion. And that emotion may come from trauma we experienced, um, some feedback we got, a bad relationship that we had, um, some words that maybe someone, a trusted someone said to us, 
all of those things. And when the emotion gets so strong, we get in protective mode. And protective yeah. mode shows up sometimes as I self-select out. It shows up sometimes as I become defensive. Mm -hmm. I become emotional in terms of tears. I also indirectly might even just in the name of the belief and mindset start self-sabotaging. Mm -hmm. So and I may not even know I'm doing it, but right. it's with my mindset going into resistive and protective mode, all in the name of, I want to keep me safe. Right. And it's just keeping your emotional self safe so that you don't have to feel what you felt based on what those emotions are. Right. So our emotions can be real tricky, but I need the audience to understand that our emotions, which are tied to our feelings, are not always factual. Right. We would love for our emotions to be factual, but they're not always at the, the emotions are merely there to protect you in that fight or flight mode. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have to cognitively break down the rationalization to tell yourself, am I really good? Am I in a good space? Or am I just really in this moment trying to tech, protect my emotional self? Right. And, and it's, it's wired to do that. We're wired to do that. That's why this work is so intentional in breaking down. And it's always good to have an accountability partner and someone there to just remind us that, hey, no, that's that old stinking thinking. Mm -hmm. That's that old mindset that's trying to revisit itself into your current situation yeah. because it sees you moving forward farther away from it. Right. That's excellent. That's an excellent, you know, um, analyzation. Now, are there, do you have to go to a coach or a therapist to get this help? Or are there some things at home that you could start to do to start to get you on the right path, on the right mindset, start to stabilize your emotions and start to really start to see some change, you know, and then you could reach out to a coach, but are there things at home that they could start doing to improve their situation? Yes, one of the things that I would recommend that we do, two things. The first thing is I'm big on the pencil and paper exercise so we get it out of our head. Yeah. Write down and be very honest with yourself, your understanding of your emotional self. And what right. I mean by that is how you believe you show up. If right. you show up positive, if you show up enthusiastic, if you show up compassionate, if you show up with empathy, if you show however you believe you show up, not only for yourself, but in relationships, in, yeah. in work, in business, do that exercise. And then I want you to then reach out to those individuals you trust, know, and love. Mm -hmm. A couple of individuals and ask them, when you experience me being honest with me, what do you see? What do you experience? How do you feel? Mm -hmm. The reality is, is that should validate exactly what you came up with. But right. what you know in reality is, is sometimes what we are, what people experience in us might be different than how we see us. Yes. And mm -hmm. so that may help you uncover and discover some beliefs that may or may not be showing up and you are not aware of it. Right. Another thing I ask people to do an exercise is I'm a big journaler. All of my coaching and counseling clients, I like journaling because journaling allows you to see where your mental, emotional mindset is at any given moment in time. Right. Take some time on a daily basis to reflect not only in gratitude, but where your mindset is. Yes. And reflect in that journal months later, years later, where you were. So you see and get to see and experience your growth. Mm -hmm. But also, as part of journaling, journaling is your no judgment zone. Mm -hmm. Because it's an opportunity for your expressions emotionally to come to life. Yes. And you mm -hmm. get to do that in your free time. And that allows for further 
self-discovery. Right. Then you've got to ask yourself, hey, I've, I've got this revelation about myself. I've got this understanding, not only from being honest with myself, but those who are in my space. So what do I want to do and how do I want to show up? Right. Because mm -hmm. this can actually show you where you very well might be falling short. Yes. I call them those blind spots. Right. Because life is about daily interaction. Life yeah. is about relationships. Life is about connectivity. And mm -hmm. I may very well be showing up in a way that I thought I was, but I'm not. Right. And I may be showing up in a way that I didn't think I was, but I right. actually am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, so it's an exercise that you can do on your own. And then even beyond that, if you say, hey, I have these goals that I want to change these things that I've, I, I've identified based on my awareness. Right. And as a result of that, what I'd like to do is enlist a coach or a therapist. If it's some trauma that I'm finding myself stuck in, I yes. say go to a therapist. If it's if it's if I'm really good and I, I don't have anything that's actually trauma, then mm -hmm. a coach can help you continue to further yes. discover where you can reach your goals and continue to grow and reach your goals and be successful. Have you found that a lot of your clients or you come across a certain percentage that are, they know they want to change, but they're in denial about a lot of issues. And if they are in denial, how do you get your, your patients to actually come out of that denial and start accepting what's going on in their life? Right. Great, great question. Another, another way that you can approach this because oftentimes you'll find some folks that are in denial. And the best way to get them to move is not by us from a coaching standpoint of mm -hmm. identifying that they are in denial, but right. through great questions and reflection, allowing them to self-discover their own denial. Right. Asking questions like, you know, who's the common denominator here? Mm -hmm. You know, discovery questions from a coaching standpoint that allows them to see where the denial is because I'm right. one who believes all roads lead back to us. Yes, it does. And so if all roads lead back to me, the answer to my problem or challenge is back to me. And part right. of that may mean I may have to let something go. I may have to shift a relationship. I right. may have to change careers. I may right. have to do some work internally to get this to be different for me. Yes. And the denial oftentimes is that mindset of I've got to protect self. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if I, if I come out of denial mode, that means I'm exposing it. Right. I just didn't want to expose it, but we don't realize that unconsciously you showed up with it and you didn't even know it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I feel like that, you know, that's one of the biggest things that people go through. And then I think it's hard for people to, you know, once they get out of that denial stage, they really have to accept who they are and their and accept those faults, you know, and I think it's hard sometimes for people to accept that they have faults, but I think people have to also realize that we're not, there is no such thing as perfect. Everybody has something, you know? So it's, you know, people have, I think people get so stuck up into the, into that media world and to that TV world. And, and they see these celebrities and they look so perfect, but their lives aren't really perfect, you know, but they, they give that persona and for some reason people believe it but everybody has something and people, and it doesn't make you any less of a person. I think, you know, people have to realize that you know, we all have faults and we have to learn how to accept ourselves. Now, do you teach people some techniques to teach them how to accept that they have some faults, accept who they are and just learn how to just love yourself. And now, and because you love yourself, let's make some changes and let's improve who you are. So you could have that self-discovery and move to your potential and be that person you want to be. Yes, yes. So true. Part of the journey is 
accepting your emotional self. Mm -hmm. To your point, accepting the fact that guess what? We are all going to be and will always be imperfect individuals and imperfect human beings right. living in a very much imperfect society. Exactly. And while everybody's goal, hopefully, is to either live out the status quo, and what I mean by that is average is acceptable. So yes. most will just be average. But right. if you're striving to be that three to 5% that yes. is operating in excellence that mm -hmm. wants to be known beyond average right. then you have to do the work and that mm -hmm. work is going to start with self-acceptance self-belief and you're going to have to know instead of looking at those celebrities and everything that we see on social media that by the way is there just so they can get likes they can go viral and they can maybe make some money doing it Right. That's not everybody's reality. Exactly. The reality is, is that I am me and my, my best, my best competition is going to be who I was yesterday. Yes, yes, yes. I love okay. that. Okay. That's going to be my best competition. Not who I just saw on the internet. <laughs> it's going to be who I was yesterday because I may not see them no more on the internet. Right. Exactly. Okay. It's going to be who I was yesterday because the persons we see on social media and the people we see out there, they're not in your ear. You are. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I need to be determined to do this work, which is inner work. Yeah. And believe it or not, I will share with the listening audience here. Here's the here's the secret sauce. Mm -hmm. The secret sauce to your success is always going to be personal development. Yes. 100%. It's the secret sauce that matters because we all can put a resume together. We mm -hmm. all can highlight all the things that we did, but your best defense in every situation of showing up is going to be not only how you communicate, but how you manage you, how you yeah. self-manage you, what your confidence looks like when you show up, your right. self-acceptance of self, how you manage your relationship with others yes. and how you really, really see yourself in day-to-day -day situations. That's all personal development. That's right. what makes us unique from person to person to person to person. Right. It's always 85% of your relationships are beyond what your social media post says, what your profile <laughs> is. It's going to be it's going to be how you communicate, how you show up. Yes. How you show up in confidence, how you show up yes. in in humility, in yes. in self-esteem, in mm -hmm. self-image, in how you how you feel about you. Yes. That's so true. That's so true. And I think people really have to really, you know, understand that it's not what don't compare yourself to what this person is and what that person is. You know, you can be in the same profession with somebody, but that person can be doing it for 25 years and they, <clears throat> excuse me, they could be on level 25, you know, but maybe you started a year or two ago. So you're going to be on this level. You know, so you don't know where that person's been. You don't know what that person's done. So you can't compare yourself to other people and you shouldn't compare yourself to other people. The only person you should be comparing yourself with is you looking at yourself and say, am I happy with who I am? And, you know, and I think the worst thing is that people always compare themselves to others and they always look, well, this person has this and I don't have that and da, 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 da. But it's not about comparing yourself to others. It's about loving yourself, I think, and, and being happy with that person. How do you feel about that, Nick? Absolutely. You, you hit the nail on the head, loving <laughs> you, embracing you. And oftentimes the, the number one coaching question I ask when someone says, but I should be here right now in my career, but I should be here right now in my relationship, but I should have achieved this by now. And my number one question is, oh, okay, I didn't know that there was a standard out there. I didn't know that there was some sort of guide <laughs> that I was supposed to be in alignment with. I, right. I, please tell me where I can find that out. Since everything <laughs> is out there on Google, tell me, I didn't know that that was out there. <laughs> Your guide is here. Right. 
And if I don't get it until age 30, if mm -hmm. I don't get it until age 40, if I don't get it until age 20, right. at least I got it. Right. That's what's most important. Exactly. I need to be where I am so that when I get there, I'm ready to do what I need to do with it. Right. You can tell someone, they can say, hey, I want to have an amazing podcast radio show and mm -hmm. I want to have it tomorrow. You're not even ready for it tomorrow <laughs> you want it because you see what it looks like. Right. You have to do the work. There's a method. There's a process that this goes through that we have to do and it's consistent it's diligent it's persistent it's it's ongoing it's growth that gets us to where we ultimately want to be and when we reflect back and right. we can speak on the journey and what that journey looked like yeah that's what's more more meaningful in life right exactly exactly and I, I think, you know, that's one of the biggest things is people like say, well, I really should be here and I should be making this much money and I should be here, you know, doing this and, you know, and I'm not there yet. And, you know, they get frustrated, you know, but sometimes either things aren't meant to be or like you said, you know, there is no standard of when you achieve it. You know, so many people, you know, that I knew didn't achieve their goals until later in life. Yeah, they started when they were young, but it wasn't until their 40s and 50s that they actually started achieving and get into the places they wanted to get. Then, you know, we live in a go-go society, I think. And I think people always want things quick, but things don't happen quick. And just like you said, you got to put in the effort and that hard work. And if it's meant to be to happen, it will happen. And if it's not, it won't. But don't be so hard on yourself. And I love how you said, compare yourself to the day before, you know, and if you see a little improvement, you're on the right track, you know, I love that. I love that. You know, I I think that's a great way of looking at it. Live in the now and don't focus. So, you know, you can set goals, I think, for the future, little short term goals and long term goals. But you can't let yourself down if you don't hit them exactly when you you do. I've never in my life, I see people, I know people that are OCD about time. You don't know when things are going to occur. And I think people just need to give themselves a pat on the back for doing, you know, doing something, you know, and achieving any little goal, whether it's getting up in the morning and being able to brush your teeth or, you know, being able to take a walk around the block. Give yourself a pat on the back, don't you think? Celebrate the small wins. Yeah. It does amazing work for your ego, for your self-image, for your self-esteem. Celebrate the small wins. That's yes. one of the major things we do in my accountability program is we celebrate the small wins. If it's a step forward and not a step backwards, if it was a small level of consistency, let's celebrate that. That creates yes. momentum for us to do even greater things. So I totally agree with that. How do you feel about gratitude? Because I feel like sometimes people, they lose a sense of gratitude. And sometimes we have to, you don't realize, you know, how important things are until they're taken away from you. And sometimes the smallest things in life can me really be the biggest things. And you don't realize it until they're actually taken away. And, you know, how do you feel? And what's your conception about, about gratitude? Great, great, great conception. One of the biggest things that allows you to also help people to see um, the light at the end of the tunnel, especially if they're stuck or they've got some limiting beliefs or struggling with, you know, even accountability mm -hmm. is again pencil and paper exercise. Journaling is one of the great things I do to help shift our mindset out of negativity because that yes. is also a mindset is Write down some things every day, <clears throat> simple things that you're just grateful for. Right. Because at the end of the day, there are people, even though you and I are having this conversation today, there are people in the hospital who cannot speak. There exactly. are people in, 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 in mental facilities who are no longer in their right mind. Right. And there are people who cannot eat, who cannot move, who cannot walk, who cannot talk. All of those things that may have some ailments, that may have some mental mental challenges, that may have some some other 
things that they got going on in their life. And just bringing it into perspective of no matter what, if I'm able to get up, even Mm -hmm. if I'm not achieving my goal right there is a place of gratitude because I could get up. Yeah, it's it's gratitude for me to even say that I'm stuck because right. somebody out there is wishing they could at least say they're stuck, you know. Right. So, mm-hmm. yes, gratitude, I think, is huge. I think we should always not only speak to it, but again, I journal about it because it's my reminder that things could be a whole lot worse. Exactly. And we operate in the now in the positivity, into adding positive value to others, including ourselves, and appreciate what we have, game changer. Game changer on your outlook, which again, shifts that mindset. Exactly. I love journaling. I think journaling is so powerful. And that was, you know, a lot of times I came to realizations that I didn't even realize when I started to journal. And then just being in a in a quiet setting or a relaxing setting and journaling, sometimes things just flew in my mind. And it was just, I would just write them down as they came into my head. And it was like, all of a sudden, emotions would come up. And it's like, I didn't even know where they were coming from. And then I would come to self-realizations and I would realize what, what was actually going on with myself. And, you know, a lot of times I, I, there were points in my life where I, I kept a journal, I wrote in the journal. And then when I got over the hump, I ripped those page, pages out and then I got rid of them. And whether you rip them up or you put them in the fireplace or whether you, you know, you, you, you put them in the garbage, whatever you do with them, it's, you've gotten over that hump and I got rid of it. And the past is the past. And then I just focused on the present and I moved on. And I felt like that was the greatest reward is that I felt like, wow, I overcame it. I'm ready. And I'm nice. And I started moving forward. And I think I love how you, you, you know, encourage journaling so much. And the, 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 the key, the, the key to positivity, the positivity is so powerful because I think you could take any bad situation that you've occurred in life and pull something positive about it. Whether, you know, you go through some type of trauma. Well, what did that trauma do for me? Did it make me stronger? Did it, did it, did it give me experience I didn't have before? And, you know, I, I think, how, how do you feel about living, living in the positive and, and keeping a positive mindset every day? Yes. And to your point, definitely when you got someone that's stuck or having to deal with trauma or bad relationships or things that have in their past that they find that they are stuck in is, especially when you're moving in the space of gratitude and compassion is I'm always reminding them, but you're here. And the fact that you are here tells me you have some resiliency Mm -hmm. you never thought you had. Exactly. You survived. You you made it. And to Mm -hmm. be able to see that and understand it too often, when we're really wound into the past and the experience of the trauma and the stuckness and the bad relationships and the history, we can't see that we made it. You made it through. You got yeah. through. the worst of it is over. Right. Now let's do something that allows us to move forward. Given the resiliency, I know I have. I right. have to remind, remind myself um, I, a great conversation I was having with my wife a few years ago, and she's a, a breast cancer survivor. Mm-hmm. And one of the things we were having a conversation and she was having a challenge with one of her 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 team members at work. And mm-hmm. um, and there was a really, really bad experience that she had had with him. And she was kind of down and out and and she right. didn't know how she was going to deal with it. And just a simple conversation of reminding her, I said, look, you beat cancer. Yeah. You had you overcame that in your mindset, mentally, spiritually, physically, and emotionally. Yes. I want you to pull from that and see that this is so low budget. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, you know what I'm uh-huh. saying? You oh, know, 100%. Pull from that strength. Yeah. And what we've got to do is really challenge our folks 
in yeah. those situations to pull from where you don't think you have it, where you don't think it mattered. And that reminding them allows them to see, wow, man, you're right. I got yeah. more in me than I think I do. Right. hundred percent. We're some amazing individuals. Mm -hmm. And if we, through the possibility, I, my number one goal is to not leave this world not having experienced the highest expression of myself that I can be. Right. I know that in order to do that, I'm going to have to go very far outside my comfort zone to see at what level that I can get. Right. Because there's a next best version of ourselves out there waiting on us to yes. discover. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Now you wrote an amazing book. I want to hear about this book that you wrote. Yes, yes. So my latest project is called The Belief Mindset. Mm -hmm. And it's a book that really educates us about beliefs and how they impact every aspect of our life. I start the book with the definition of belief, which is in essence an accepted truth. Because right. not just a thought, but an accepted truth. Because once we accept it as whatever it is, we've accepted it as a belief. And yes. there's a long chapter just talking about beliefs, the different type of beliefs, how they work, whether it's in relationship, whether it's in business, whether it's in life for ourselves. And I give us all examples of how beliefs impact us in our mindset. But right. then the last half of the book is all about journaling. And mm -hmm. the first question I ask or the first journaling prompt I ask the, the reader is now that you understand beliefs and how they impact your life, who do I believe that I am? I like that. And so from there on, there's a whole bunch of believing, belief journaling prompts that really helps us discover the essence of who we are, how we operate, what motivates us, what drives us. And it is my hope that after finishing the book, we have raised a level of self-discovery that allows us to truly walk into some of those uncomfortable areas of our life that we may have not been willing to do so before because right. we understand where the beliefs came from and how they are impacting us now and how they can be amplified on the good side and lessened on the bad side. Oh, I love that. Now, where can people find this book? Yes, you can find the book right on my website, which is nicholasdillon.com. That's N-I-C-H-O-L-A-S-D-I-L-L-O-N.com. I love it. Now, before we go, I want to, uh, if you give some people maybe three or four important tips that they could leave with, what would you like to tell people? that you think will have a, a huge impact on their, their overall self and their overall health? Yes. The first thing that I want us to, to remember is we don't have to believe everything we think. Mm -hmm. That's the first tip. Right. Your mind's going to circle a wagon all throughout the day and your life. It doesn't have to be internalized as an accepted truth. We don't right. have to believe it. Anything that is not true can be dismissed. Exactly. Pay attention to the energy that you generate from your beliefs and mindset. The right. second thing that I would leave, and this is probably the most powerful, is that everything we've talked about, especially as it relates to belief and mindset, is this notion that it takes a moment, just a moment for us to shift our mindsets and disrupt a belief that we may have had. Right. For some people, it takes a lifetime to get yeah. to that moment. Mm -hmm. And so what I would challenge the audience to know is make today your moment. Yes. Thank you. I love it. I love it. This has been an amazing episode. I You've given us a world of wind of, of information and everything you said resonated with me. And I think it's so important because people get stuck in their old habits. They're thinking they're, you know, they, they, the way they, they do things. 
And it's so important as time goes on, as we age, as we change as human beings, that we open ourselves to change, change in our mindset, change in our emotions, and how it, the importance and the impact it can make on our overall health. And you've made it very clear the importance and how to do it. And I think this will help a lot of people in our audience. And I thank you so much for taking the time out to teach people about this and to teach them such valuable techniques and tools on how to get started. And do you have your coaching information on your website if they want to contact you and have some coaching sessions with you? Absolutely. They can just click on the accountability group link and you can reach out to me also through the contact me form that's right on my website. And I'm going to offer everyone who's listening today a free gift. If you just go on believeuniversityfreegift.com, there's a free gift, which is a PDF download that will give you 12 top self-defeating beliefs and 12 alternatives, along with a step-by-step -step guide on how to disrupt limiting beliefs, followed by you simply reaching out for a belief and mindset discovery session. That's for I... everyone that tunes in. Oh, that's amazing. I love it. And I'll put all the information in the description. So everybody listening, you can go into the description and all that information will be there and you can click onto these links so you could have that session with Nick Dillon and change your life and bring your life to new heights and new potentials. Thank you so much, Nick, for being on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. You too.